Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Pat here. When it comes to the world of video games, most non-video game licensed properties have a solid history of under-delivering when it comes to entering the gaming world. During the classic era of the Turtles however, the Turtles franchise would end up putting out a cornucopia of quality content. Turtles video games are some of the most fondly remembered titles of the late 80s through to the mid 90s, with all time greats such as Turtles Arcade and Turtles in Time under the franchise's belt. To this day, gamers respect and fondly remember these classics, leading some fans to go as far as programming their own games, paying tribute to these wonderful days. Perhaps the best known example of this is probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rescue Palooza, a huge fan game featuring a huge roster of characters to choose from that took influence from various classic Turtles titles. The high quality fan made video game we are looking at today though has somehow slipped almost completely under the radar with not even a long play or let's play being present online to show gamers what this is all about. In this video we shall be taking an in-depth look at this rather underappreciated gem, which comes in the form of a quirky fan game that deserves way more attention. This ladies and gentlemen is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga, a Game Boy inspired video game. Yeah. When it comes to the world of the classic era of the Ninja Turtles, as mentioned earlier, there are plenty of great games featuring this awesome foursome that are out there to appreciate. While probably the arcade and home console titles appear to receive the most love and admiration today, the brand would also see the release of an amazing little trilogy of games on the 8-bit monochrome Nintendo Game Boy. Perhaps it is the lack of colour with these games and overall simplicity compared to their home console counterparts that results today in these games' stronger points being somewhat undersung. But there is no denying that each of them did bring something different to Nintendo's popular handheld system. While most do not give these titles perhaps the appreciation they deserve, a gentleman by the name of Oscar Celestini obviously feels quite differently. Oscar, a man who was born in Italy in 1984, grew up both watching the Turtles and playing the Game Boy, eventually choosing the interesting career choices of working as a cartoonist, colorist illustrator and someone who dabbles in both pixel art and video game development. The man has worked for the likes of DC Comics and others under his belt, but it would be this indie game developer's Turtles passion project that grabbed my attention to inspire me to make this video today. You see, Oscar had made the rather unique decision to create a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game for PC that features graphics that are inspired by those that could be found on the Game Boy. Oscar explains that he has loved the Turtles since he was just 5 years old and felt this was a great way to both celebrate and express his love for the franchise. The man envisioned a simple old school platformer with graphics that offered just four colours on the screen in order to try and give it that old school Game Boy sort of feel. Now for me personally, this was one of those games that I discovered by accident through browsing on the information superhighway. At first glance, looking at this project, it simply led me to assume it had never actually been completed as it is somewhat rare to try and look up long plays or let's play footage of a game on YouTube and get no results in return. Clicking Oscar's very own video game trailer though provided me with a download link necessary to access the full game and what a fun little title Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga would actually be. The moment you boot this game up, the game's great music created by Gianluca Papalado begins to blast out of the PC speakers, instantly suggesting that players may be in for a treat. The game offers a basic Game Boy-esque introduction that depicts the turtles in their live action movie form. An interesting stylistic choice for the title, considering none of the big games released in the 90s opted to feature the Turtles movie designs over the likes of either their comic book or animated TV show counterparts. Oscar Celestini comments that he opted to create all the sprites and backgrounds for the game in line with the style of a 1990 movie, an artistic decision that he made 
purely on the basis that this piece of Turtles media was his all-time favourite. Between stages, there are even cutscenes that help progress the story, with the first of these suggesting that Shredder has kidnapped Splinter. The images that were collated for the game, along with the title's unique story, were both created for the game by Simone Granata. As for this title's gameplay, as mentioned earlier, the game offers good, wholesome, solid 2D side-scrolling fun, similar to that of which can be found in the first two Turtles Game Boy games from back in the day. Although, with it being a Game Boy-inspired PC game, the creator did make some choices to make the title feel more comfortable when being played on modern hardware. For example, the game plays in a 16x9 aspect ratio, which is of course the perfect shape for modern PC screens, and gamers are given a choice of visual styles between black and white, green monochrome, or a choice of whether or not to add arcade-like scanlines. Personally, for most of my play experience, I opted to play scanline free in monochrome green, as that style choice felt the most Game Boy-like to me, so therefore I was most comfortable with those particular visuals. The game takes an obvious leaf out of many previous Ninja Turtles video game playbooks, in that players have the ability to switch between all four Turtles at any point during a stage. Like the original Turtles NES game back in the day, each of the heroes in House Shells have their own independent life bars, so when one is running low on health, it is often wise to switch one out for another to avoid a game over. The Turtles appear to vary in that they each have a different weapon with slightly varying reaches. However, from my observations, the differences were mainly aesthetic. Controlling the green team, players must platform through five different stages with even bonus levels in between, all of which we are going to cover now. When beginning to move through the game's first stage, players will likely quickly note that they are in the sewers, and that there are foot soldiers and mousers laced through the level, that can be taken out by the use of one quick, satisfying slash. Gamers with a keen ear will notice the epic music that can be heard in the background, which is an awesome remix of the first stage music from the original 1989 NES Turtles game, offering up an awesome new chiptune rendition. In fact, most of the great music in this game are updated tracks from Turtles games of the past. It is awesome to hear and very nostalgic. Throughout the stage, there are multiple layers of platforming and ladders to ascend. These platforms are littered with pickups and collectibles, with some being located in smashable crates. Items you can collect include ninja stars that can be thrown, pizzas that of course replenish health, and turtle shells that give players additional points. There are also 20 ooze canisters that can be found throughout the entire game, that can be gathered as an additional challenge for those who have experience playing this one. At the end of the first stage, players have the opportunity to take on aerial laser shooting opponent Baxter Stockman, who does not offer too much of a challenge. Between stages, as mentioned earlier, the game also features mini-games. These bonus levels are beatable by successfully throwing ninja stars at oncoming foot soldiers for 30 straight seconds. If players are able to keep this momentum up for a solid half a minute, they are awarded with a whole pizza that sees their entire team's health replenished. This much needed prize makes these bonus levels particularly tense, especially nearing the end of a game, where getting life back can feel like a make or break situation. Knowing that every time I won it increased my chances of beating the game, I certainly got a lovely dopamine hit every time I completed one of these. There is also a stage that features a Manhattan skyscraper theme that requires a lot more jumping than the first level, including needing to jump over bonfires and later jumping from actual building to building. This stage culminates in a boss fight against the iconic duo of Rocksteady and Bebop, the bumbling but slightly more threatening version of Bulk and Skull. The game's challenge steps up massively on stage 3, where I gained my first few game overs throughout the stage. The reason as to why this area is more death inducing than those seen previously is that the area is laced with ninja traps, such as spikes that shoot through the floors and walls, resulting in the creation of lots of turtles kebab skewers for players who don't know what they are doing. Navigating to the end of this portion though allows players to encounter a boss battle against franchise favourite Slash, who is always cool to see. 
Stage 4 sees gamers move through a more mountainous region, which sees the introduction of laser shooting rock soldiers into the game, which culminates with a boss battle against Krang, before finally moving on to the fifth and final stage, which of course is the legendary Technodrome. The last challenge setting of various Turtles games from the classic era of the franchise. As one would expect, there are more traps and enemies here than any other place in the game, with even maze-like elements that involve teleportation placed within to cause a spot of disorientation in the final throes of this awesome little game. The last level also marks the only stage in the game where two separate boss battles take place, the first of which is a rematch against Krang, this time using his android body, then finally against the franchise's primary antagonist, Shredder himself who rather annoyingly killed me on my first attempt, so I had to play this one credit game from scratch all over again. I must say though, I did appreciate the lack of respawns, as overall I feel it added to the game's tension, and it was fun memorising the patterns in order to beat this relatively short fan made experience. All in all, I must say that I was thoroughly impressed with what Oscar Celestini and his small team were able to come up with, creating a rather interesting passion project which you can feel the love exuding from. I enjoyed every minute of this one, and I am quite frankly baffled it has not been talked about more in the past. The game seems to have been completed back in May 2018, and appears to have had very little in the way of media coverage. In fact, as mentioned near the beginning of this video, I seem to be the first YouTuber, to my knowledge at least, to cover this game in any capacity whatsoever, as there aren't even any Let's Plays or Long Plays up that feature the game. Bearing all of this in mind, this title in my opinion is the very definition of a hidden gem, and considering that Oscar has made it free for all to play, I jolly well think people should be experiencing this game. Overall, I think it's a wonderful little title that brought a smile to my face, so why not click the link in the description to give it a download yourself. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga, an awesome Game Boy inspired Turtles game that can be experienced using PC hardware. If you yourself are aware of great fan games like this that have somehow slipped beneath the gaming radar, then I and others would adore it if you could point us all in the right direction in the comment section down below. If you would like more videos covering underrepresented gaming content, or are just a lover of fighting games, wrestling or beat em ups, then consider subscribing to Top Hat Gaming Man right here on YouTube. I upload two new videos every single week designed for your entertainment. Finally, if you want even more content and would like to see some of my videos before the rest of the world, then all of my Patreon backers currently have access to my coverage of the confusing history of Renegade, the first ever beat em up, and River City Girls Zero, the River City Girls prequel that is set to come to the Nintendo Switch shortly. Not only that, but you receive a credit and a shout out for your kind support for what I do. So without further ado, special shout outs go out to... Sebastian Velez, The Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heyo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey Imarsh Sr., Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Rowan Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Azurakai, Keith Ferguson, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinker, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Anne McNamara, Homer's Gonzalez, Instant Gratification, Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sanghee, Felatio, Lang the Miller, New, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Rene, Marvin Aaron Liga, TOG Driver, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Fiant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Casey Wrights in Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, August Piazza, and everybody else who backs my work on the Patreon platform. Thank you so very, very much. Yeah. Cheerio.